Discord's breach might be worse than you thought. Synology walks back some exclusivity things, and Intel says they're ready to set a new GPU standard. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, October 9th, 2025. As a reminder, we do have our PC giveaway drawings happening tomorrow. On Friday, over on our Twitch stream, twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech, we're going to be drawing winners for three different PCs, Falcon Northwest Talon with a 5090, Falcon Northwest Tiki with a 9070 XT, and a 5070 Ti custom build for our twitch.tv forward slash UFD music stream. That's going on over there. So go check that out. Come uh, hang out with us over on Twitch in case you want to and uh, get all the details for that. But it appears that there's new details coming out with regards to Discord and the data breach that was reported on previously. Now, initially, it seemed like Discord was doing its best to downplay how much this actually mattered and how many people were actually affected, saying only 70,000 users had their government IDs breached. However, that is in direct contradiction to the hackers who are saying that it's actually a lot more. And the reason why Discord has all of these government IDs is because of the age restriction limits that have been placed in part due to government intervention. Now, currently, some cybersecurity researchers and reporters are saying that the actual group behind the hack is saying they have 2.1 million user verification photos, which happen to include the IDs because that's a necessitated point of actually proving your identity on Discord. Whereas Discord has come out and said that these numbers are inaccurate and that it is just an attempt by these groups to extort them. Obviously, Discord has a reason to downplay this incident due to trust and security reasons. The group trying to extort Discord has all of the reasons to inflate their numbers in order to make it look like the data breach is bigger, saying that they have 1.5 terabytes worth of data. Regardless, both groups have incentive to say different things about the actual incident than what is happening. It'll become clear hopefully in time just how widespread this breach is, but again, does highlight various different issues with things like supply chain attacks, where it's not necessarily Discord that got hacked, but it was a third party servicer who handles all of this information that got hacked and it's gonna create some headaches moving forward. But what definitely can create a headache is not having a dash cam. So check out today's video sponsor. Some time ago, we added a new perk to being a member of the UFD tech team, getting to drive the company truck. Everyone say hi to Marv here. Unfortunately for Marv, we've been running him on the road loosey goosey style. That is to say without a dash cam. Marv's camera shy days are long gone though, thanks to today's sponsor, Basis and their Prime Trip VD1 Pro dash cam. The Prime Trip VD1 Pro is an industry first design with a dual solar panel and lithium battery power source setup. All this power works to juice up the 4K 30fps front camera and the 1080p 25fps rear camera, both of which will record 30 seconds of footage after an accident is detected. The built-in G sensor ensures that accidents of all shapes and sizes can be recorded, offering three levels of sensitivity, capable of sensing everything from bumping your buddy with your car in a fully consensual way to a totally non-consensual high-speed collision. The Prime Trip VD1 Pro also features Sony's Starvis Night vision, allowing for a clear picture even in low light conditions. So sadly, you can't say, okay, Starvis, don't crash my car, but you can get some mighty clear footage of the doofus that did crash into your car. Now, even if you can't speak to Starvis, you can talk to your dash cam. The Pride and Trip VD1 Pro features English voice commands such as open screen, take picture, show front camera, and many more, so you can have a safe and convenient user experience even while motoring along. Once you're safely parked, though, you can bust out the Basis app to see the footage your dash cam has uploaded using its built-in 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. You might also be wondering how much footage fits in such a little guy, and that is thanks to the included 32 gigabyte micro SD card. This bad boy gets you four hours of loop recording time, with larger SD cards increasing your loop recording time all the way up to 64 hours at 512 gigabytes. The Prime Trip VD1 Pro also features a useful GPS feature, letting you keep real-time tracking on your vehicle's location, speed, and trip duration, so no more wandering around a parking lot for your car. So after all of this, why are you still driving around with just your eyes? Scoot around town or embark on a road trip with the added security of a dash cam. Grab yourself a Basis Prime Trip VD1 Pro dash cam today via the link in the description below. Thanks to Basis for sponsoring. Well, just like not having a dash cam is a bad idea, Synology is realizing that maybe having exclusive hard drives that are Synology branded for their NASes was a bad idea. They're walking that back for some of their latest disk station network attached storage setups, specifically the Plus Value 
W and J series devices are no longer going to have to use Synology branded devices and that you can use non-validated third parties. This is coming after Synology said that you could only use verified drives with certain versions of their storage boxes, specifically saying that this was to make things better for their users and they followed a rigorous validation process. But Synology came back out and said that due to feedback, this clearly wasn't the right idea. So they are walking back that move. Now they are not saying that they have done any reputational damage, but based on information out in the industry, this appears to have hurt their sales numbers with people just going to a bunch of other NAS providers and Synology is likely walking back for that reason. And Nvidia is not officially walking back the release date of their DGX Spark AI super cluster on a freaking desk, but they're not releasing it either. We talked about in recent episodes of Hot News how AMD struggles to hit some deadlines. Well, here's an example of Nvidia not getting their GB10 super chip out onto the market when it was supposed to. These things were originally supposed to drop earlier this year. I believe May was the initial release date, then it got pushed back to July. Now here we are in the fourth quarter of 2025 and they are nowhere to be seen with Nvidia's website only having a notify me button. Certain retailers had them listed for roughly 4,000 odd dollars and they now have no release date for these little mini computers that you slap on your desk so nvidia missing the deadline not really talking about it because it's frankly embarrassing but we'll keep you updated as soon as we know when these things are actually going to hit the market and speaking of the market reese knows how to navigate that thing that deal master is going to deal you up some deals yo welcome back to uft deals bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet and here's the deals for you starting off we've got the drop plus epos h3x wired gaming headset going for an internet $39.99, giving you $39 and one set off. But the next up, we've got the Logitech G Pro X Super Light Wireless Gaming Mouse, going for only $94.99, giving you 37% off. And then lastly, we've got the Crucial T705 2 terabyte version, going for only $159.99, off of its regular price of $199.99, giving you 20% off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked down in the video description. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I can tell you that my best video game deal this year, and maybe of all time, was Claire Obscure Expedition 33. That game rocked my world in a way I was never expecting, and it turns out a lot of people share the same sentiment, because 5 million copies have been sold of that beautiful game that, in my opinion, should win Game of the Year later this year. But with this announcement, the game developer, Sandfall Interactive, saying that they have a little thank you to the fans. So there's going to be a free DLC where they're going to have new content, new enemies, new stuff to do for every type of player and allegedly will focus on the giant wine bag that is SKA, the lovable little sack of what grape juice. I'm excited for this. I don't care if there's a release date. Honestly, they could slap a price on it and I'd pay for the DLC. That game did so much to me. I, I talked about it at length ad nauseum uh, when I was playing it earlier this year, right around the time of Computex. Fantastic game. If you haven't played it yet, Highly encourage you to. Reese and Jason, both on the UFD tech team, have played it but not finished the game. Bad boys. Actually, Kyler too. Play, finish the game. It's worth it. That the fu the finale is absolutely. Oh my goodness! Don't just do late game content. Actually, see the story through. It's a big deal. And Intel's coming out and saying that. They're a big deal too. They released this video yesterday, the road to Panther Lake Intel Arc Graphics is part of their tech tour that they had on Panther Lake recently where the host Alejandro Hoyos is detailing with some execs at Intel what's going on with their GPU stuff. Shout out to Alex, one time a fellow University of Florida graduate. Always love hanging out with him whenever we're at various different conferences. Regardless, there wasn't a whole lot in the video specifically detailing everything that's gonna be going into the XE3 GPU that are going to be featured on the new mobile CPUs, but they do highlight all of the learning opportunities that they've had, how they are committed to actually continuing to make driver changes, and that they are focusing on things like their AI stack in order to make it so that the XE3 GPU is going to be better than ever. And most specifically, the GM and VP of Intel Klein Computing decided to conclude the video by saying that the graphics in Panther Lake will set a new standard, not only for Intel, but for the industry as a whole. We'll share more details 
details as the launch approaches. Reportedly, as of the time of hot news going out, I think is when the embargo is supposed to lift on architectural details with regards to the rest of the Panther Light lineup. So be sure to watch out for videos for that. We'll cover that in tomorrow's episode of hot news as we get those details. But it appears that Intel is becoming more and more confident in their integrated GPU stack. We talked about recently how they're changing their naming nomenclature where the X is gonna mean a big beefy integrated GPU. It's supposed to have 12 XE3 cores. Hopefully they outperform the number because I, I would really like to see if they can go toe to toe with something like Strix Halo, which has 40 compute units in their RDNA graphics. But even if it's somewhere along those lines using fewer cores, that could be a good time for all of us. And let's see if you had a good time in yesterday's episode of Hot News by reading the comments. There were a bajillion. I, I mean, I should have known that talking about bad Windows things was gonna bring yins out. Linux nerds, you're just all up in the comments, especially because I made a joke about how I didn't know how Linux works and boy, you guys took that real seriously. And some of you suggested that I should potentially uh, move to Linux. I don't need to. I use Windows for gaming and Linux is worse for that. It's just, that's how it is. My Windows PC is specifically, exclusively, used for gaming. When I need to do work, I'm on a MacBook Pro because battery life is insane on those things for the amount of power you get. So that's that's my current stack of how I do things. And I'll use the Steam Deck when I want to game on the go. So I am using all three operating systems. Just a little fun fact. Then we got Omni Hine saying, I see the switch can on the desk. What's your favorite ones? One regular flavor and one black one. Okay, if by regular flavor, you mean like the non-descriptive ones, I'd have to go with the Element Blue or the Purple, I think it's called Epic. Those were like part of the original lineup. I like those a lot. I think I'd go with purple over the blue, but if you're including flavors that have been around for a while, orange bubblegum's my, uh, my slamming one. I won't say no ever to an Iron Brew candy floss. Those, those will go pretty hard. If we're talking wacky flavors, as far as like things like this, the blueberry meringue. Yesterday it was banoffee that was on the desk, which is banana and toffee, not coffee. That was quite good. I've had the orange and chocolate recently. Enjoyed that. Speckled eggs tasted like speckled eggs. I don't want that in a drink, but it's amazing how their mouth scientists have been able to figure out how to do that. Well, I've had malva pudding lately, that was fine. The lemon meringue is probably my, my top as far as all of those go. I really, I really enjoy that. If you don't consider that a wacky flavor, then uh, the, the banoffee's pretty good too. And then we got Waylon saying, listen, Brett Host, you've been making me really nervous lately with where you decide to set your beverage. I don't understand how you haven't knocked that off to the floor yet. Perfect spatial awareness makes me very suspicious. Are you synthetic? No. My chair, my arms here. I'm not an animated speaker, so I'm not like waving my arms past the drink, but also it's like mostly empty. I could do that and there's no liquid getting in here. This is where the, the empties go. The empties go on the set. And just, uh, just so everybody who's familiar with Switch can know, I'm in South Africa and uh, I'm not in this episode of Hot News anymore because it's over. See you back here for more of the House Tech News later.